Hey everyone, it's Aaron, the inventor of Quibble, and today I want to talk to you about remaining S probability. So what the heck is that? Let's take a look here. Uh, if you are not familiar with Quibble, I'll give you a quick rundown here. An S is the most important tile because when you play on your opponent's word, you steal it. And the easiest and best way to play on an opponent's word is to pluralize it by putting an S on the end. If somebody played Zeta and I put the S here, I would steal the entire word. So very important to have. It can be a big game changer. This shows how many S's have yet to be played. The white ones have not been played. The grayed out one has been played, and that would be this one right here. And this shows how many tiles remain in the draw pool. And in this video, it's important to note a couple of things that this, uh, the amount of tiles that you are not sure about is actually this number plus seven because your opponent has seven in their hand as well. And this number in this scenario right here would actually be two S's that have not yet been played because we have one of the ones that hasn't been played. So there are two left out there and 29 total tiles. So uh, this is the equation for determining if your opponent has an S in their hand at any given time, or determining the probability that they have an S in their hand. And this is very important because you want to try and gauge whether it's safe to play a word that could be pluralized or not. Um, and in addition to this, at the end, I think it's interesting to think about the odds that when you draw a tile it will be either an s or a wild so we'll talk about that at the end too so uh i went to art school i am not a mathematician so i'm gonna put this in easy to understand language uh this equation not so important for this video but i would really like to thank this amazing reddit user right here who helped me to figure out the probability equation and you can pause and read this more if you want I also want to thank my son Casey who simultaneously came up with the same equation and also sent me, if I can find this, a cool Desmos calculator where I can plug in numbers and get the percentages that you're about to see here. So thank you to both of you. Um, so now the simplified version. Again, there are 29 tiles left in this scenario. There are two S's left. So if you run that equation, that shows that there are there's a 43% chance that your opponent has an S. When I think about this, you can't do the equation on the fly every single move you make. So you need to train yourself to get a general gut feeling for what this number is. And I don't think it's necessarily important to know the number accurately, but I like to break it into five categories. One is there's no chance that the opponent has an S or there's a low chance, medium chance, high chance, or an almost certainty that they have an S. One of those five things. So I thought it'd be fun to run through a few of these scenarios and pause and see if we can take a guess at would it be low, medium, high in any scenario. So we'll do that in a second. But there's one other thing I wanna talk about here which is interesting to me. And I don't have the answer to this math equation. And it's something that I would really love to hear people's input on. If you are a mathematician or want to take a stab at this, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can email me at hello at quibble.com or write a comment below the video. But it is my strong hypothesis, um, an almost certainty that as the game nears an end, this number becomes less accurate and it, it becomes higher and higher and higher and higher than the equation would show. And the reason for that is because unlike other tiles, when people get S tiles, they tend to hold on to them because they're waiting for the perfect move. And I think how long someone holds on to an S tile depends on the user. But I definitely know some people who I would call S hoarders who just hold the S. So you know, you think of the progression through the game as being sort of like a piece of fly paper. And the second that somebody hits one of the S's, it's not like an E or a T or an R where it comes in and it goes out. It's like it stays in your hand. So if you were to pick up an S at the one quarter mark, you might still have that same S in your hand at the three quarter mark. So I have theories about how I might calculate that number. Um, 
I won't go into them here, but all I want to note is this number is totally accurate at the beginning of the game and less and less accurate as the game goes on. So when you do this math, put in that mystery constant that I have not yet identified or calculated at least, and just know that with 29 tiles left, this might be more like 55%, 60%. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, okay. So now let's, uh, let's all give this a try. If you want to pause these and think about them for a second, uh, feel free. But this scenario, there are 20 tiles left. There are zero S tiles left. So what is the probability that your opponent has an S? Pause it if you want. But I will tell you this first one is a trick question. And the answer is 0% because obviously there are zero tiles left. And um, it doesn't matter how many total tiles are left. But sorry to start you with the dumb trick question. But I think it's important to note that when you get to a point where there are zero tiles left in the or zero S tiles left in the game, it is like the Wild West. You can play those six letter words. You can play those J and Q and X words and feel much more confident that they will not be stolen. They might be stolen, but they will not be pluralized at least. So the second the O's, the O's, the S's are gone, it, it becomes a completely different game. Uh, this is another one that's a different approach at it. So this would be, you know in this scenario, because you have the last S, that the the probability that your opponent has an S is zero, but your opponent sees that there's one S left out there right here. They don't know that you have this and there are 53 tiles left. So in your opponent's perspective, the odds of you having an S are 13%. But the great thing about this scenario is that you do have the S. So it appears that you don't have the S, but you really do. But the even better thing about the scenario is that you have the, the last S tile and there's still more than half of the tiles left out there. So you can play any word you want without fear of it being pluralized, but your opponent uh, is still uncertain if you have the last S or if the last S is still in the draw pool. So you are at a serious advantage for more than half of the game here. So great spot to be in. Um, okay, now uh, this is not a trick question anymore. Let's try this again. There's 77 tiles left. There are three S tiles left. What do you think? Low, medium, high? You can pause if you want. I'll give you a second. All right, let's take a look. 25%. So I would say this is a medium chance. One out of four. Not bad. You might want to take a chance on playing the S thing or a word that could be pluralized or maybe not. but this number, I believe, is more accurate, too, because there are 77, three quarters of the tiles are still left. So let's try another one. 51 tiles left. There's one S left. Again, this shows two, but you have one of them. So one S left, 51 tiles left. What do you think? All right, I'm going to show... 14%. So this is a very low number here. This would be the spot where I think you would want to um, to maybe play those longer words and hope that they can't, uh, can't be stolen easily. Let's try one more. 27 tiles left, 2S tiles left. All right. I am going to show now 46%. So this is a very high number and there are 27 tiles left. So if my theory is correct, this number would be even bigger than that. So what's interesting is that, well, I will say that this is about the highest probability that you will ever see that your opponent has an S. Uh, if I can go to the Desmos thing. So really interesting fact is if you're only going on this equation, very rarely, like not until the end of the game, or if there were like all four S's left, I mean, I could do the math here. And well, I did do the math. So this number is actually 50. So this is saying there are four S tiles left and there are 50 tiles left. So half of the tiles left and all of the S's left, and there's still only a 46% chance that your opponent has an S. So the good news is if we're going only off of this equation, you can rest assured pretty much that 
your opponent never has more than a one in two chance of having an S. So if you're behind in the game and you have to play something that could be pluralized, it's still probably an okay play uh, if you're desperate to take that chance. And I don't want you coming back and getting mad at me if you go play a six letter word and it gets stolen in the next turn. But according to the math, that's, uh, that's how that works there. So, um, so the flip side of this is, uh, what are the odds that you will get an S from the draw pool when you draw? Cause that's something that's very interesting to know too. And this is actually a much easier equation. Um, if we're talking about S tiles, it's simply how many S tiles are left over divided by how many total tiles are left. Um, but since the wild tiles are also important, I will do one with wild tiles here. That would be how many S plus wild tiles are left divided by how many total tiles are left. Um, there are two wild tiles. They have little black uh, triangles up in the top left corner so you can see them. So you can see there are no black triangles here. So there are two wild tiles and three S tiles. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in this scenario, three out of 77, five out of 77. So if you were to draw one tile from the draw pool, there is an almost 4% chance that it will be an S and there is a six and a half percent chance that it will be an S or a wild, which is actually at this point pretty good. Um, I will say that like how the probability that your opponent has an S goes up as the game goes on, this number would go down as the game goes on because even though it's the three out of 77 thing. The odds that one of those three is in your opponent's hand increases, uh, and therefore this decreases. This is the equation here. I won't go into that too much either, but the P is the probability of you getting an S or an S in a wild, depending on what you're calculating. And the N is how many times you do that. So for S tiles in that same scenario right here, if you were to draw one tile, it'd be a 3.9% chance. But if you were to swap all seven of your tiles at this point, you have almost a one in four chance that you would get an S back, which is pretty good. Uh, there are a lot of times where if you're behind or even if you're not behind, you can see that just if you were to have an S, it would create like a 30 point swing because you'd steal this massive word and it would be really beneficial to do that. So. In scenarios like this, well, actually, first, for S and Wild, it's even better. You start with 6.5%, and if you were to swap all your seven of your tiles, there's now a 37.5% chance, almost a 4 out of 10 chance that you would get an S or a Wild. So um, this is definitely something to think about, and like I said, this is probably a strategy that works better at the beginning of the game. Um, but if you're able to, to do a quick take on this equation, you might have a chance to do something interesting here. So the mighty S tile, um, it's, uh, it's very important in the game. And with a little bit of practice, I think you can get a pretty quick assessment at the odds of drawing it or if your opponent has it. So Good luck in your quibbling. I hope you get lots of S's and lots of wilds, and I will be back with more later. Thanks.